Trish Stratus is in Money in the Bank ladder match. You heard it right, Trish Stratus in a freaking ladder match, everyone. Sky Blue takes over AEW with awesome matches on Dynamite and First Ever Collision. Rhea Ripley squashes Natalia again. Bianca Belair eats up Charlotte Flair on Mike. Referee Aubrey Edwards make in-ring debut. And Cora Jade is hating an opportunity. <laughs> Welcome if you're intrigued about this, this is DS and this is Women's Wrestling Weekly. Happy Pride with all the Pride festivities going around and let's jump right into Raw. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I cannot believe this! Trish Stratus is in Money in the freaking Bank letter. This is crazy. What is going on? So we had Money in the Bank qualifier match, Raquel Rodriguez versus Trish Stratus, and I was like, there's no way. Like, we need a powerhouse in ladder match, aka Raquel. Raquel is winning totally whatever. Well! I mean, let's talk about this match. This match really served. I'm not saying it was a like classic or anything, but for Trish fans like me, hell yeah. This is like first Trish's singles match on Raw in like years. So I'm like, already was like, oh my God. I'm just like happy that we're seeing Trish Stratus on regular TV. It's amazing. And it was such a treat. Love Trish's selling a bear hug. Like how she did iconically with Viscera, the corner choke spot failing because Raquel was so tall. That was so funny. And yeah, it kind of looked funky when Zoe attacked Raquel, but whatever. The match was one. Oh my god, that clothesline selling. Anyway, seeing Zoe interferes, Becky Lynch runs in to attack Zoe, and using this opportunity, Trish attacks Becky Lynch, and the moment Becky attacks Trish back, boom. Dick, you finish. Oh, this is so freaking smart. I love this so much. I honestly can't even imagine what Trish being in a ladder match is gonna be like. Like, this is not something I've ever imagined happening. Oh my god, stratosphere on the ladder? Stratisfaction off the ladder? Either way, it's gonna be so stratifying. I also love how this sets up tension between Raquel Rodriguez and Becky Lynch. That feud will be great down the line too, so I'm so happy about it. Stratified. What else? We got Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville versus Katana Chance and Kaden Carter following last week when Katana and Kaden tell Sonya and Chelsea that they are no fun. Oop, we're still going with this party character? And before this match started, we saw this TikTok videos of Chelsea doing all the classic Karen stuff. And this was probably one of the best promo package like ever. Like it's unreal how good Chelsea is. The match was about showcasing Katana and Kaden as a team and they showcased tons of amazing tag moves in there. And they're so amazing, the crowd instantly reacted to it. And they pretty quickly pick up the win from Sonya using their tag finisher named After Party. I gotta say, good though we're building Kaden and Katana, it's honestly so hard to make any team believable competition to Ronda and Shayna, so any build up like this is very much welcome. So I'll say stratified. We also got Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley versus Natalia rematch from Night of Champions, and Natty comes out after this emotional interview, but even the theme song was being shady, hitting before she was even done talking, and even before the bell rings, Rhea Ripley destroys Natalia, ragdolls her around everywhere until hitting the riptide with officials, stopping her from further damage. And while exiting Rhea says she has women's division in lockdown and she sure is because she's got nothing going on with her reign unless this Natty situation is some kind of a big build up towards SummerSlam or something like that. We know that Natty is queen of SummerSlam. I mean, I like the story Natty is telling here. She's been in this company for 15 years and the division has gone through so much change and she's still wondering if she belongs. So hopefully they're just building for something bigger with Natalia, proving that she belongs with the banger of a match I know that she can deliver at SummerSlam or if not, at least they teased Raquel watching Rhea on TV. That match will sure be amazing. It is whack either way that Rhea's title reign has lost significant steam since her spectacular match at WrestleMania. But whatever, she's a heel, so maybe WWE wants us to think that she's having a horrible reign. I'll just say Confucius. I'm hoping that this will all turn out great. Other cute thing that happened is Max and Dupree hitting a suplex on Valhalla after weeks of training with crowd going wild for her. Are we getting Valhalla versus Max and Dupree match soon? And this episode is brought to you by Dossier. You know we love Dossier here because thanks to Dossier, we're always smelling amazing. Especially during summer where I get kind of sweaty. I'm very, very, very thankful for Dossier. Always keeping me smelling amazing. My favorite right now is back to this spicy vetiver. It's spicy, it's citrusy, perfect for hot summer weather. And it is inspired by this popular Hermes fragrance, Terre de Hermes. I can't even pronounce it, but that's okay because I don't need to break my bank getting the designer cologne. Because Dossier is all about yes to smelling good and no to overpaying. There's so much price markups in fragrance business. Dossier is all about 
clean, ethically sourced, and long-lasting high-end perfume, importantly, within reach. So if you're curious about stepping into a new way of consuming perfume, Dossier is here for you. And don't forget to use code 10 ring the bell for a discount just for Ring the Bell fam at Dossier.co. Thank you, Dossier. Let's head to WWE NXT and the opportunity continues. Dana Brooke is staying in NXT and NXT even played this great promo package recapping Dana's entire career from NXT to 24-7 championship and everything. Anyway, she says she'll be in NXT as long as they want, but Cora Jade comes in to tell her that nobody likes her and slaps the heck out of her. She sure is queen of selling slaps. <laughs> This plays into Cora Jade versus the number one contender Thea Hale match, and Dana walks out halfway through the match just to be punched by Cora for no reason. Jade then grabs a kendo stick, but referee takes it away, allowing Dana to shove her into the steel stairs, letting Hale apply an impressive Kimura lock submission for the win. Hale looked really great heading into the championship match against Tiffany Stratton, and we're also getting Dana Brooke versus Cora Jade on NXT Gold Rush in coming weeks, so I'll say this is a win. Stratify. We also see Tatum Paxley versus Roxanne Perez as a follow-up from last week's Battle Royale match where Tatum eliminated herself to help Blair attack Roxanne. The match had its moment. Tatum showed this impressive springboard double underhook suplex, but the ending was a little wonky as Roxanne hits the pop rocks. Paxley's knees gave out, having Roxanne fall on her head. Ouch. But Roxanne still picked up the victory, and post-match, Roxanne cuts a promo for Blair Davenport saying that she'll hurt Blair, just like she hurt other women in the division. I like that NXT is giving Roxanne more of an edge with this more badass tone. I mean, it's definitely a working process, but I'm here for it. I I think this was a fine segment and Davenport versus Roxanne will be a great match. Uh, good. Not bad. Lots of character moments. Gigi Dolan's target is now on Kiana James and Fallon Henley warns her to be careful. Gigi's delivery though is super airy. You don't mess with a reject. You can't talk like this and expect us to understand. We also see Electra Lopez and Lola Vice bodying up for a soon disappearing NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. Please keep it around. AW this week in recap. Sky Blue. Just Sky Blue. It starts with AW Dynamite, AW Women's World Championship. Tony Storm accompanied by Ruby Soho versus Sky Blue. She comes in with this new top looking hot as hell, and her mom was at the ringside for this very special moment. Tony and Ruby comes in with Soraya's cutout because I guess she refused to come to DC, but I don't know. I really miss her. She's been away for some weeks, so hope everything is okay with her. This was a really fun match, and they had a lot of fun with that paint spray, starting with Tony spraying Sky's mom enraging Sky Blue, and after the commercial break, Ruby hands Tony the spray paint for more spray action on Sky, but Sky hits back with her own spray paint action only in blue color. And she hits code blue on Tony with crowd exploding, but Ruby distracts his referee. Storm then hits Storm Zero to finish Sky, but she kicks out, but ultimately falls victim to Tony's Texas Cloverleaf submission that looked absolutely amazing, actually. This was really awesome match. Super fast paced, tons of entertaining spots, near falls. You know I love me some near falls. Absolutely stratified. Post-match, Outcast beats down Sky and Willow Nightingale runs out for a save to set up a tag match for Collision. Impact Wrestling was an interesting one. It started out with Motor City Machine Guns Championship Celebration with all the boys coming out to say their pieces. Why am I talking about boys? Because girls interfered. Giselle Shaw then comes out out of nowhere complaining about how Trinity took all the spotlight. By the way, Giselle Shaw was wearing an outfit inspired by Trish Stratus Survivor Series 2004, which was so cute. Then Trinity and Deanna Perrazzo all subsequently come out. Deanna Perrazzo celebrated how she has surpassed 500 cumulative days as champion in Impact and Trinity shades by saying that Deanna will be champion until Slimeversary. Out comes Santino Morella, the GM, who sets up a 10-person tag match for the main event with everyone in the ring. The match was like typical multi-person tag match. It starts out with Deanna and Giselle, and we even see Trinity bring her corner booty shake move, which I really like. And Deanna and Trinity even work together for this double submission on Giselle and Savannah. The later half of this match goes to men, but we do see Jay Vidal yet again attack Trinity. So I don't know what vendetta you have on my sis Trin, but I'm sure you'll be dealt with. Trust, you will be dealt with. Period. Anyway, Trinity and Dion's team ultimately win at the end, and Mickey James's husband, Nick Aldis, turn on Alex Shelley. This was mostly for the men, to be honest, storyline wise. I was like, fine with it. Uh, good? Not bad! AEW Rampage, is it still a main show? Should I even review it? I don't know, but this episode has some notable stuff, so I'll cover it. We had Heal Taya Valkyrie face. Trisha Dora in a two-minute squash match where I don't really know, maybe she gave up on Road to Valhalla after losing to Jade twice, or maybe just decided to come up with some contingency finisher, and finishes Adora with the curb stomp. We later see Chris Statlander, the TBS champion, come up to confront Taya backstage that she's ready to defend her title anytime, any place. Taya then leaves like saying whatever. And the highly 
anticipated in-ring debut of Aubrey Edwards. Aubrey Edwards, Mark and Papa Briscoe versus Karen Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal. This was serving some pure diva, with Aubrey and Karen rolling around the ring for a cat fight. I haven't seen this in years. Aubrey hits diva classic snapmare, and Karen reverses with yet another classic rake to the eyes. And while the referee was distracted, Aubrey delivers guitar shot at the head of Jay Lethal to knock him out. Oh, she knows exactly what she's doing because she's a damn referee. And she locks Karen Jarrett with this figure four leg lock for the win. I mean, this was fun for what it was. I'm just gonna say satisfied for the entertainment. Whatever happened, happened, and they brought the entertainment, and I say thank you. WWE SmackDown is lit for yet another week with tons of women's showcased. We had Grayson Waller effect with special guest Charlotte Flair, and you know she loves her witty lines, and she came up with a smart one. It's not about the number of title reigns, but it is about how she has Asuka's number. See? Number, number. It was crickets. She literally had to tell the crowd that this is where you have to pop. I appreciate what you did though. Then angry Bianca Belair comes in. Early in the night, we see Bianca go up to Adam Pearce and tell him that she tried getting the title rematch the right way, but now she's gonna try it her way. And she drags Charlotte Flair and mops her on the floor with this amazing promo saying that she did not need 14 times to become the longest women's champion of modern era and the past is past, you Charlotte Flair, and present will be presenting. And to be fair, Charlotte kind of shot herself in the foot by saying that she's a champion with or without the title because she literally is always lurking around the title storyline anyway. That's the number one complaint that everyone have about Charlotte Flair, so I don't know what she's talking about. Um, Bianca Blair brought the fire here. She Mike's drops and leaves no crumbs left. And damn, it's so crystal clear that Asuka is losing her title soon to make room for Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair feud that it hurts me as an Asuka fan. We then saw Io Sky versus Zelina Vega, super short two and a half minute match. The focus was really on dissension of damage control. And as Bailey tried to help Io with the distraction on an apron, it ended up disturbing Io. And while Io is arguing with Bailey, Zelina Vega hits Io with 619 for the victory. It did what it had to do, sad to say, but the end of damage control is coming. Darn it, Dakota, please do something. This was, this was good. Uh, good? Not bad. In this match, we see Shotzi confront the two about how they cheated to defeat her last week, and she challenges Bailey for another Money in the Bank qualifier match. And Io accepts in behalf of Bailey. And this was followed by mixed tag team match Mitchin and AJ Styles versus Scarlett and Karrion Cross. We start out super hot with AJ helping Mitchin to hit a tornado DDT on Karrion. Then we get a taste of Scarlett with some cool moves on Mitchin. But the real highlight of this match was the interaction between Scarlett and AJ Styles, where she flirts with AJ, but he's a devout. Christian man, he says, I'm married. Bitch. Using this distraction, Karrion locks in cross jacket followed by F5 for the win in two minutes. I gotta say, every little time that Scarlett gets in the ring, she intrigues me so much, so I need to see this more. I'm very satisfied. And on the first historic episode of AW Collision, we see Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale versus Tony Storm and Ruby Soho. Sky Blue arrives in her hometown, Chicago, with tons of fanfare and her mom present here again. Another really fun match. Ruby Soho sets up Destination Unknown on Sky with Tony setting up spray paint sky, but Willow stops Tony making her accidentally spray all over Ruby's face. Willow then throws the paint spray into the crowd and takes care of Tony letting Sky Blue hit a beautiful code blue for the win on Ruby Soho. Hope our Chicago girl Sky can keep this momentum. I'm very stratified. Alright, thank you so much for tuning in for this week's weekly review. I'm still working on Alicia Fox interview right now. It'll take some time and I know that hardcore Alicia Fox fans, you guys know what I'm talking about. There is just really, really juicy stuff and we had a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to release that soon. Working on it. And just to catch up with everything, please follow me on Instagram at DSN and ring the bell DS on Twitter. All right, see you next time. Bye.